YouTube. This is Necros Devo, and today we have a Zwilus header. It's been a little while since I posted a Wi-Fi battle. I was doing a lot of tutorials and um, mega overviews, so why not do a double battle uh, header, I guess. I don't know. This team that I had put together here, this was back for X and Y. I have a couple of X and Y battles left to get through. Then we'll be moving on to Aorus, but I kind of just wanted to play with Venusaur that day, which to be fair, I always want to have Venusaur on a team. But specifically here, I wanted to just support Venusaur on a team. And uh, I also wanted to sweep with a Volcarona, because I had to use a Volcarona since black and white, really. So it's been a while. On my opponent's side, you can see that he has some a kind of a weird team there. Um, and this was a passerby battle, so as soon as I saw the team on the passerby, I was expecting Mega Kangaskhan. And since he had that, I didn't know what other things he would have. Um, it turns out that I think his Feraligator has a Bright Powder, and his Gengar is going to have the Focus Band. So those are going to be two things that I will be forced to deal with in this battle. But, as they say, a true trainer is going to be able to adapt to different situations as they occur. So, even though I didn't know what he had going in, we're going to figure it out. Now I do have my Choice Scarfed Adamant uh, Physical Greninja here. And I'm just going to go straight for Waterfall on Shuckle. I figured he'd set up Sticky Web, but it's hard to care on the team that I have. Uh, I think the only thing that really is bothered by Sticky Web is going to be Volcarona. I did, I get a pretty good damage roll on the second one and I'm able to 2 it KO it. And uh, he goes out into his Electivire. Now I didn't, I am locked into Waterfall being Choice Card, but I didn't think I could KO him with the Waterfall. So I just go out into my Claydol. And uh, he actually, I think he predicts me to switch or something. I'm not sure what he was thinking there, going for the Thunder Punch like that. But I'm able to get up a screen and go for Stealth Rocks. This Claydol, actually, it's only attacking move is Rapid Spin. It gets up screens and it can Rapid Spin and Stealth Rocks. And I've had it since, I want to say, 4th Gen. So, Clayface has been around for quite a while. And uh, I am able to get up both screens and Stealth Rocks and spin away his Sticky Web. So, Claydol definitely was able to do what he needed to do right there. Now expecting another Fire Punch, I just switch into Tyranitar, hoping that I don't get the little 10% burn chance. Because Ryza uh, has the ability to hit him with an Earthquake. Surprisingly, he hits me with a Brick Break, which I was confused why he didn't use earlier. But I guess he just didn't want to reveal it. So that was some, some good sleight of hand by him. And I actually expected him to switch out, which is why I went for Crunch. But I'm still able to finish him off, which is fine by me. I don't have my screens anymore, but I do still have Stealth Rock up, so that's pretty good. Uh, Ryza does run speed investment, but I didn't want to give Feraligator a chance to Dragon Dance up by switching out. So I just stayed in and went for Crunch. He actually does end up going for Dragon Dance. But now that his um, Electivire where Brick Break is gone, I figured now is a good time to come in and set up the Reflect. And then I can just go out into Venusaur. Uh, if he does have Ice Punch or Ice Fang, whatever his Ice Move is, Mega Venusaur will not be very weak to it, and I basically am just going to be able to completely stall him out with Giga Drains and that type of stuff. So he does actually carry Ice Punch. It doesn't do that much damage, but he gets a crit, and so even with a crit, he doesn't do that much damage. And uh, but unfortunately for me, he actually ends up freezing me on the second one. So he got a critical hit, and then he froze me with it, and now he's going to Dragon Dance up in my face. And I really don't want to switch anything in to take another Ice Punch or an Aqua Gen or anything like that. So we're going to have to play a little bit carefully around this as he gets another critical hit with an Ice Punch. And he's finally able to take out my Mega Venusaur with two critical hits and freezing it. So that was interesting. Um, I think that I'm still faster with my Greninja. And I'm able to go for the Night Slash, but unfortunately because he has Bright Powder, I miss. And he goes for the dragon tail and switches me out into Florges. Um, this is actually my bulky offensive Florges, so it's modest with a lot of HP investment alongside a special attack investment. So I'm able to take the hit from the Aqua Jet and then finish it off. 
Um, seeing Kangaskhan come in, I figured he would Mega Evolve and go for Fake Out. And the nice thing about Mega Kangaskhan is that he uses contact moves that hit twice. So while it is banned, he has a pretty good chance to burn himself here, or not a pretty good chance. He has twice the opportunities to burn himself. And I run Morning Sun on my Horosis. I have several different Volcarona from back in 5th gen. And this is actually my favorite one. This is the first one that I bred back then. It has Morning Sun, Quiver Dance, Fiery Dance, and the Bug Buzz, of course. So finally, I am able to get the Flame Body activation, and I'm able to uh, take basically any hit from him now, and I get the boost from Fiery Dance. So I'm going to be able to get my HP back with the Morning Sun if I need to, and I already am at plus two special attack, so that's just fantastic. Now Gengar comes out. Uh, I wish I had an opportunity to get more bulk from the um, Quiver Dance, but it's not going to end up mattering. Unfortunately, he has Focus Ban, and so I'm going to need to kill him twice. And he actually misses the Hypnosis, thank goodness. That would have been quite annoying had he hit Hypnosis and not only live with the Focus Ban. Of course, Focus Ban, for those of you who don't know, is like a Focus Sash, except for it has a 10% chance of always activating. So it's a kind of a, re a less reliable repeating Focus Sash. But uh, now as Alakazam comes in and just gets KO'd by the Bug Buzz, so Volker Runner was able to do a lot of work in the end game there. Now, against my second opponent, uh, he's running uh, also a passer by battle here. I'm using the same team. And you can actually see at the team preview there that he was running several poison types. So um, not only are his toxic spikes are going to be useless if he tries to set those up with Dragalgy or something, because I have Venusaur, but I just have plenty of switch ends. Unfortunately, that does mean that my um, floor just will be a little bit less useful, but that's okay. His Toxicroak actually is carrying Fake Out, which I haven't seen on a Toxicroak in a while. It's probably going to be more popular now with Talonflame running around. But uh, it's it's useful for scouting generally as well. It's also very popular in double battles. Now he does go out into his Cold Shiver, the Frost Last. I haven't battled one of those in a long time. And I went for Earthquake just trying to catch one of the many things in his team weak to ground. And I knew I wasn't weak to the Ice Beam, but I figured this was a good chance to get in my floor just just because he has so many things on his team that really don't want to take that damage. Uh, in case he wanted to stay in, I went ahead and went for a Wish, because now I can bring something in for a free switch. I do have Psychic on my floor just, but I, I really wanted to set up some screens, get my entry hazards going, and then I can bring it back in later. Since Psychic is so good against several members of his team, I didn't really want to reveal that too early in the battle. Also, he has a Crocodile, so if I revealed that early, then he'd have free switch ends there to, for his poison types because most people don't really expect an Office of Forges. But I am able to put up my uh, rocks, and right there I kind of, I was thinking, hey, I should switch out because he's gonna go for the Dark Type move. And then I realized he might predict that, so I just stayed in and set up a Reflect, and that actually worked out, because he misses with the Earthquake and then ends up going for Crunch on the next turn after I already have Reflect up. So now that I have both screens up, now is a great time to go back out into Forges. I can take the Crunch attack very easily with screens and the resistance, and now it is time to retaliate with some wonderful moon blasts and psychic type attacks and all that good stuff. Now he goes out into his Scallopede. Moon blast actually does pretty solid damage against it. I could just go for another moon blast. Uh, Poison the Jab is not going to be able to KO me with the screens up. And I just went for psychic right there in case he tried to switch out into something else to take uh, moon blast, thinking that that was the only move I had. And of course that puts the fear into him as well. So he actually switches out into Toxicroak and I decided just to go for Protect here to make him waste his Fake Out. Um, and now that uh, I made him waste the Fake Out, we can switch out into something more appropriate here. I decided to go out into, of course, my Volcarona again on the off chance that his contact move burns him. I didn't feel like he would do very much damage to me with the screens up. And the screens give me an opportunity to set up some wonderful Quiver Dances here. Now he does go into Dragalgy, which actually is going to resist both of my uh, stab type moves. But behind the screens and me quiver dancing up, Dragalgy is not just going he, without, especially without adaptability, he cannot stop my Volcarona from setting up unless he has Dragon Tail. And so right there I was purely testing to see if he had Dragon Tail, which is why I kept going for the quiver dances, because there's no point in attacking at this point, because I can't 2-hit KO him. But he doesn't have it, so now that I know that he doesn't have it, Ward's going to go for Fiery Dance and hope for the boost. The Life Orb Fiery Dance is almost able to one-hit KO him at that point, but I do need to take down the Dragalgy before uh, my screens wear out. So I decided to go ahead and go for Morning Sun, so 
since his skulls are doing so little damage. And now I can finish it off with another fiery dance, hoping for the boost. That way I can get make sure I get a nice, uh, clean sweep going on. So he does end up going out in the crocodile. I think this actually, um, I, I really like using crocodile as a scarf crocodile. Uh, I don't think I've ever really faced one. He has a really nice base speed though, base 92, I believe. And a lot of people underestimate that, but unfortunately, he's not going to be faster than me. I also forgot to mention that this uh, Volcarona is actually a modest Volcarona. So it's packing considerably more power than usual. It's designed to be bulky, a little bit more bulky, rely on the flame body hacks. Um, well, not rely, but abuse it a little bit. And then set up a little bit more quiver dances than usual. But as you can see, it works out pretty well in both battles as it's able to come about mid game and get some solid sweeping in. So I really enjoy using Herosis. It's a combination of Horus and Isis which are both uh, different gods of the sun. But I hope you guys enjoy those two double battles. I hope you uh, also enjoy the content I've been putting out, whether it be the mega overviews or the Dexnap tutorial. I'll have other tutorials up for um, breeding and super training slash EV training and ours as well. So thank you guys very much for watching my content and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye now.